In this video, we're going to give an introduction to acid-base titration curves. Um, and the idea here is, is to go over some basic uh, vocabulary words so that we're all kind of speaking the same language when it comes to titrations. So we have to remember what a titration is, and this comes from chapter four. So if you don't remember things about titrations, you should go back and really look at chapter four because a lot of this stuff that we're doing is just iterations of stuff that we did in chapter four, uh, mainly for strong acid, strong base. Uh, in the case of weak acid, um, and weak base stuff, that's going to be new. So a titration is a reaction between an analyte, and that's something where we don't know the concentration, and a titrant, and that's something where we do know the concentration. And so the goal is to use the amount of titrant to come up with the concentration of the analyte. And the way that we do that is through the equivalence point. And so the equivalence point is the point in the titration where there is a stoichiometric amount of titrant that has been added. So in essence, um, if you go back to chapter four, this is where the moles of the titrant equals the moles of the analyte. Now I will say that that is when we have a one-to-one -one stoichiometry. So this is for mono, this would be for the case of a monoprotic acid and a, monopro, uh, and a monoprotic base. Um, when we have a polyprotic situation, we will discuss that um, in a sort of a separate video. Uh, what, what you'll see is it just becomes sort of an iteration of, of uh, the uh, polyprotic acid having more than one equivalence point. But I wouldn't worry about that too much right now. We'll take a look at that in the lab also. Okay, so, but the equivalence point is really, really key because we're going to, when we get to the equivalence point, we can figure out how many moles of titrant we put in based on the volume and the concentration of the titrant. And then we can, uh, knowing that at that point the moles of the titrant equals the moles of the analyte, we can then figure out how much analyte we have uh, in terms of moles and then come up with this concentration. So that's really the key point of the titration curve. Now, we have to define a titration curve. So a titration curve is where we have a plot of pH versus volume of titrant added. And so I'll show you in a second, um, we'll, we'll kind of uh, draw this out schematically and you can see how we, we actually set this experiment up. But um, a titration curve is where we actually take the pH using a pH meter and we literally plot it, uh, the pH as a function of the volume of the titrant added. And so uh, that is going to be the best way for getting to, to find out where the equivalence point is uh, through a titration curve. Now, if you don't have a, um, a pH meter or if you're doing a titration that's not necessarily an acid-base titration, but maybe something else like a redox titration, uh, we're not going to be dealing with that in, in this chapter. But um, another way of doing it if you don't have a pH meter is to use an indicator. And so an indicator is something that changes color when you get to the equivalence point. Now in the context of acid-base reactions, a, an indicator is typically a weak acid or base that is some kind of dye, meaning it's, a, it's, it's colored. And so this weak acid or base is colored. And what happens is, is the, color, the color of this weak acid or base depends on the pH. So for example, phenolphthalein is a weak um, is a weak acid base uh, that is colorless when the pH is less than 7 and then when it you get into basic conditions it deprotonates and then um, the color changes to a pink so the deprotonated form is pink so this is, can be very useful for an acid base titration because when you reach the equivalence point and you go past the pH of 7 you get to you see this color change to pink and then you know that you've reached your your equivalence point now there's actually something important we should mention, and that is the difference between an endpoint and an equivalence point. So the equivalence point is when you reach stoichiometric equivalence. That's when moles of the titrant equal moles of the analyte. The endpoint, on the other hand, is slightly different. Um, so when you're using an indicator, the endpoint is when you get a visual color change in the solution. Now, in, for most cases, this is going to be very, very close to that pH 7, which is where we're going to have that endpoint for a strong acid or a strong base reaction. So, you know, it's, it's a pretty good approximation of the equivalence point, but it is slightly off because, you know, you need to go a little bit past pH 7, just slightly, in order to get that color change. So the end point is where you get the color change, and that approximates the equivalence point. And the reason why it's an approximation is because this requires a slightly higher than 7 pH to, to deprotonate the phenolphthalein and for it to change to, to pink. Okay, so what does a titration usually look like? Well, what a titration usually looks like is something like this. So what you do is you put your analyte into a container of some form. So it could be a beaker or a, a, um, an Erlenmeyer flask or whatever. 
So you have your analyte down here and you measure out a very, very careful amount of volume. So your volume is going to equal something to a good number of sig figs, so like 25.00 mils. Uh, and so you accurately know your volume of the analyte. And you need the volume because when we ca calculate the concentration, we need to know the moles and we need to know the volume. And so the other piece of equipment you need is a burette. And so in the burette is going to be your titrant. And in this case, you know the concentration very accurately, 1.000 molar, for example, NaOH. In this, let's say this is NaOH in this case. And so let's say that our analyte in this case is uh, an HCl, but the concentration is unknown. It could be any acid, but uh, let's just say in this case it's HCl. And so what we do is, and if you remember, burettes are graduated, and so we can measure the amount of volume added um, into that solution. So what we do is we add the titrant in and we measure the difference in height or using the graduations and this difference is the volume added. And so what we can do is we can get the number of moles of titrant by saying, well, okay, the, we know the concentration of the titrant times the volume of the titrant and then if we know the moles of titrant at the equivalence point, we can say that moles of titrant equals moles of the analyte at the equivalence point. And from here, we can get the concentration of the analyte by taking the moles of the analyte divided by the accurate volume of the analyte that we've measured when we started the experiment. And so that's basically the setup of a titration. And a titration curve is going to look something like this. So remember, what we have is we have volume, uh, I'm sorry, we have the pH on the left axis, that's what we're measuring. On the bottom axis, we have the volume of the titrant. And so this is going to look something like this. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at this titration curve um, in the next video. We're going to explain where this titration curve comes from. Uh, this is very poorly drawn, but we'll draw it better in the next video. But you can see that we're tracking the pH uh, as a function of the volume of titrant. And this should make sense, right? We're adding base. And so the pH is going up as we add base. So that, that makes sense. And we're going to dissect this, this titration curve in the next video.